Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 101. We're back here in the Mile Higher Podcast studio. Oh, yeah. Enjoying it so far. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the new views. If you watch on YouTube, we also have four camera views now, so you can watch us in four different angles. Yes, you can. So definitely check out the YouTube channel if you listen. Yeah, definitely. Adds a whole nother element because we are able to show pictures and video and stuff. It really does. Especially with today's episode, we're talking about moon conspiracy theories as well as creation theories. Yes. We're going to probably change how you look at the moon, maybe. Mm, There's a lot of really interesting things and theories and conspiracies that, yeah, may or may not be true. So that's what we're diving into today. But we want to thank our sponsors for today's episode, Native Bomba, Stamps.com, Hunt a Killer, and Manscaped for supporting the show. Also, if you haven't checked out MileHire.com, we've got tons of really cool merch. I'm wearing actually one of our merch shirts today. So check that out. Yes. Janelle's got her Guys, black pick one up. mountain crest hoodie on. This is the best part. Oh, yeah. The sleeve. It's lit. It's lit. But yeah, that's MileHire.com. But let's not waste any time. We've got a couple news stories we wanted to talk about. One of the Mm -hmm. things that has been going on in the past month or so has been this coronavirus. Yes. And big story. Yes, it is. Lots of panic. Mm -hmm. So in in case you didn't know about the coronavirus or what's going on with it, basically since December 31st, this virus has emerged out of Wuhan, China, and it has killed at least 170 people and infected more than 8,000 people across 20 countries, including the U.S., and they're not calling this a pandem- full-on pandemic yet, but it is rapidly spreading, especially throughout China, and the World Health Organization is calling it a uh, public health emergency. So mm. it's uh, kind of scary, to be honest, because they've actually quarantined the whole city of Wuhan. and That's got to be scary, being in quarantine. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't imagine. Can't, you can't leave, leave the city. You can't, yeah. yeah. Especially in a crowded city, and you know, there's a disease outbreak, and you want to leave, obviously. And there's millions and millions of people there. It's going to be so scary. Seriously. Worry that, you know, this transmission of this virus we now know goes from human to human. And it originally started going from an animal to human. And they believe Mm -hmm. that it may have originated from a bat, actually. A bat. A bat. So at one of those meat markets still? Yeah. Well, yeah. From the Wuhan market that they have there, they have all these different types of animals. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the menu last night. And it's kind of astounding what they what they sell there, well, yeah. both alive and dead animals. But mm-hmm. doesn't seem very sanitary, if you ask me. Like, well, because it's all like all the, hanging there; it's a lot outside. Well, yeah, and and a lot of these animals carry these viruses mm-hmm. and rabies and anything else, and these can jump from, you know, one animal to the next. So, yeah, how do you even crazy. know you're getting safe meat to eat? Honestly, if that's you know what you're mm-hmm. doing is trying to get some food, but it's really scary. But a lot of people are saying that, you know, they think it's pretty overhyped, you know, because we do lose a lot more people to other viruses, such as even the flu, you know, mm-hmm. is way more common than this. And we lose tons of people to flu every year around the world. Yeah. It's interesting how whenever something like this happens, because, I mean, we've had a lot of different viruses over mm-hmm. the years, like H1N1 SARS and the bird flu and Ebola, yeah. you know, most recently. Mm-hmm. And when you actually look at how all these kind of stack together, there's a chart that kind of breaks it all down as to, you know, how many cases and deaths and all of that. Mm -hmm. So far, the um, this coronavirus has it's starting to gain some momentum, but it's still relatively minor in comparison to some of the cases and and fatalities caused by some of these other viruses Mm -hmm. like the h1n1 is crazy was just crazy huge yeah because i mean essentially the flu so yeah everybody got it yeah but it's interesting how to me the media seems to like to stir things up a little bit and kind of Mm -hmm. create a panic in a sense oh yeah and it's also interesting how stocks for like the pharmaceutical Mm -hmm. companies all rose after after this virus came out so there's you know some people out there that theorize this could be some type of virus that's created Mm -hmm. in order to invoke this panic and allow these pharmaceutical companies and labs and things like that, that work on the, you know, sort of uh, vaccine for it to all of a sudden see a uptick in, you know, value and and profit and stuff. It's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. A bunch of people brought that up to me just on Twitter and stuff. And there's all types of conspiracies around this. People think it's like a distraction 
there's this other theory that Bill Gates like created this and released it. Have well, he kind of that? predicted it uh, <laughs> yeah. like a year or two ago. Right. He predicted there's that there'd that. be this virus and, you know, it would, it would start this way and kind of move throughout the world and kind of infect a bunch of people. But I mean, we've been predicting these kinds of things and mm-hmm. different people have been predicting these pandemics for a long time. But I think when you look at it from a scientific perspective, it kind of makes sense that we're starting to have more of these viruses because the, you know, we're expanding as a population. The world mm-hmm. population is, is booming. So there's more and more people in smaller areas. And not only that, we're, you know, food, there's could be food shortages. So we're starting to get more animals, you know, that mm-hmm. we may consume into the mix and then as well as moving into their environments and habitats and we become more susceptible to diseases that these animals might carry. So mm-hmm. that could be why we're seeing an, see more a rise yeah. in these viruses and stuff, but just less like regulation on food maybe because there's so many mouths to feed. Right. Exactly. Well, I can't, I can't imagine how sanitary this Wuhan market is based on the pictures that I saw. I'm just like, ugh. everything's exposed to the air and everything. Yeah, it crazy. makes sense that these viruses can start from places like this. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, really interesting and um, obviously really scary for those that are dealing firsthand with this stuff. Mm So We're going to be traveling soon. I'm debating whether or not to get a mask. Right. But now I feel like I don't need it. Well, yeah, I mean... it. Last week, Sarah said at the airport, like, no one was wearing them. Yeah. I mean, I think the the immediate threat to all of us is very low right now Mm -hmm. um, because it's primarily in China where it's running rampant, but... You still got to be careful. It does make you think about your just yeah. personal hygiene and san- being sanitary at right. the airport, especially mm-hmm. where there's a lot of germs and things. I mean, I always seem to get sick on airplanes out and being Definitely. in a confined space. People are coughing and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. But yeah, I just, I just wanted to talk about that because that's been a big topic in, in the mm-hmm. past month or so. But this next story is one that came out a few weeks ago, actually, about Helen Sherman, who is the first British astronaut. And she said in an interview with the observer that she not only believes that aliens exist, but also that they could be living undetected among us here on earth. The T the T. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I mean, maybe, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) maybe she knows some, something that we don't, but it's interesting to start hearing these astronauts come out, you know, publicly and start to voice their opinions on aliens and extraterrestrial life and, you know, the majority of them believe that they're out there or that they are already here. And it's like, why would you ruin your career just to like make up a big lie? You know, like Mm -hmm. I really trust these people. They have worked really hard. It's not like anyone can be an astronaut. You know, there's some credibility behind that. And like, why would you just say things just to say them or to like stir up? You can only dismiss so many people before it's like, okay. I mean, how many astronauts now? It's a lot. It's quite a, few that have come forward and said something related to aliens or ufos or just something sketchy even like come on we have to take these people seriously i think so they clearly love space they wouldn't like make this type of thing up right exactly and this whole idea that maybe aliens the reason why we haven't because everybody's like well where's the proof we haven't seen them oh but for being here on earth right for being here on earth right now that's everybody's argument is like Mm -hmm. where are they yeah, that's they're a big clearly not here among the alien community, whether or not they're here on Earth or not. But this idea that they could be invisible and maybe, you know, invisible to our eyes because we just can't perceive them because maybe they're made up of something different than us. You know, we never I don't think a lot of us really think about, well, if a, an alien being came from some other part of our, you know, solar system galaxy mm-hmm. or other parts of the universe, even that life could be created in many other types of ways from what we know here on earth, you know? Yeah. And they might be made up of different materials than we are, you know, like definitely made up of water and things like that. Well, Mm -hmm. they could be made up of some other type of compound. And that's where this astrobiologist actually jumped in after she heard this astronaut come out about this and said, this is very possible that there could be other extraterrestrial beings of some sort. And I mean, by extraterrestrials, I don't necessarily mean, like aliens in the sense of like humanoid aliens walking around and we just can't see them or something. It could even be some type of animalistic being or something that (laughs) arrived here on an asteroid that hit the earth or something that's, that's crawling all throughout the, uh, the earth and we just can't see it, but it's there and it's from another planet. That's technically alien life. Is it possible that an animal that we, you know, already have on earth is an alien? 
such as a sea creature maybe maybe they one, landed in the ocean yeah maybe one that's not been really like this uh, highly te- or uh researched or mm-hmm. you know we have not really found out where they came from or mm-hmm. things like that the or, octopus yeah the fact yeah, that it's right. got some alien dna is I interesting know. some of the shit under there is just wild yeah so, but i mean that's an idea or just the idea that they look exactly like us or can look exactly like us and could materialize to look like us and are just walking around we just don't know because it just looks like another person right or the fact that we you know we can't even see all spectrums of light you know mm-hmm. they could be visible in another spectrum of light that we can't right. see mm-hmm. uh, to the naked eyes that's another possibility is that they're just we just, they're they're all around us or we encounter them sometimes and we just can't see them i think it's hard for us as humans to wrap our heads around the idea that life could exist without a body to carry it and you know not all you know it doesn't have to be a actual formed body right in order to be a you know yeah spirit, well if I it's guess? yeah i mean if it's comprised of some other type of materials yeah, or exactly mm-hmm. like there's a possibility that in an, on another planet where you know we are carbon based organisms on earth and in another planet they're silicone based or some other type of substance that they're based off of that reacts differently maybe with earth's gravity or you know reacts differently with time and space like they're able to like you said manifest themselves Mm -hmm. and kind of come in and out of of existence Mm -hmm. in a sense like they can appear and disappear dimensions totally i mean we just don't know but there's Mm -hmm. a good chance even based on science and what we're starting to learn in astrobiology that it is very likely that there is some type of extraterrestrial life Mm -hmm. maybe here already that's very interesting it really is and it makes you wonder it definitely makes you wonder and i mean it definitely does all these things seem to be happening around aliens and ufos especially and one of the other things that i i thought of was that the royal air force so uk's Air Force admitted that they have been studying UFOs for 50 years. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And that they are finally going to be releasing a lot of their UFO files that they've had and on different events and and sightings and things like that. In the next couple months, right? Yeah, in the first quarter of this year. Mm. Which will be... They got till March, something like that? mm -hmm. April? Yeah, so they'll post all that online for, I think, the public to go look at. And I'm really excited to see what's in there. They've also said that throughout the 50 years that they've been studying UFOs, they have determined that they do not pose a threat to us. Oh, that's good news. Which is interesting because it seems that the U S is kind of starting to take a different approach as far as what we've heard from various individuals that are involved with UFO research along with our, you know, department of defense and everything. They're starting to say kind of the opposite that there is an imminent threat when it comes to UFOs. So So, it's like the UK and the U S are going to disagree about, Sort of, it seems like that as far as the Air Force goes. I mean, there's no evidence, as far as I know, of, of UFO, any sort of UFO being a threat to, to anybody. Um, but as I mean, far as we know, as far as we know. Mm-hmm. but it's interesting that they, they came out and said that. So, all of these things are kind of culminating together to maybe prepare us for some alien disclosure this year or in the coming years. I feel like we'll have a lot more information around this. So, we'll see. I feel like I, they're always saying we're going to release stuff. We're going to release stuff. We're going to do this. We're going to. It's just like, slow. They're it's slowly. So slow. It's like dripping. I guess like a few years ago, though, slow. it's not like we had confirmed UFO footage. And no, and it, it them confirming the the program and like there have been some really big things in the last few years to confirm that the government knows about this. And, right. Well, and you got to think too that maybe they're still trying to figure it out themselves. Like maybe they don't really oh, yeah. know fully I don't themselves. They, and I don't think they do. So they're kind of slow releasing this Mm -hmm. to kind of subconsciously prepare all of our minds for what could happen. And they just don't know exactly what will happen if we kind of keep going down this path with with aliens and UFOs. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. But this last. (laughs) Oh, my God. This last story is just just funny. You want to explain it? Oh, yes. This was my idea to cover this because. (laughs) I heard about this over the weekend. This oh is God. a story about how people on TikTok are <laughs> actually doing this thing called the testicle taste bud challenge where you whip your balls out and <laughs> not on camera or else you're banned. 
but like you film your face and then you dip your balls into like different things. So I've seen people do Kool Aid. I've seen uh, like ketchup. Soy sauce seems to be the big one. So now all these boys are dunking their balls in <laughs> soy sauce on TikTok. And Josh this is, is going to do a live demonstration. Well, Josh actually already <laughs> did the test by yeah, himself. I'm definitely not doing it live. I didn't so get a don't witness worry. it. So I don't fully believe he, t- he did it. Okay, I'll tell you exactly what I did. Well, I got, hang on. Can I finish yeah. explaining? Because I didn't even tell them why people are doing this. Yeah, why are people... This <laughs> Just sounds ridiculous. Fun. Just... No, yeah. The reason people are doing this is because apparently someone heard about people having testicular taste buds in their in their balls, in their mm-hmm. drunks. And that there's like, you know, taste taste receptors all over the human body and some areas are actually stronger than others and apparently your balls are one of those. And so guys report like tasting really salty or citrusy things, like orange juice even is one of them. Um and so Josh what do you what do you find? He did the experiment today. Well, what was your, I just wanted to add research? that the reason why this originated was because there was a study that came out on mice that mice oh, right. testicles could could taste had taste buds yeah. on them. But it hasn't been scientifically proven that your balls have taste buds like your tongue does. But it is true that we do have taste receptors all over our body, whether right. or not we can actually taste things in your mouth right. when you, you know, but we do technically taste. Right. So that, that's the, been the premise of this whole mm-hmm. challenge. And guys are claiming that, oh, yeah, I can taste soy sauce in my mouth. So I was like, all right, so I, I want like, to try this. You need to do it. Yes. I need to know. And I don't have <laughs> balls. So. So I got a little cup, <laughs> a little like sushi uh, soy sauce cup that you dip your sushi in, <laughs> filled it up with soy sauce. And then I went into the bathroom and I really like submerged them pretty much. <laughs> Or submerged a ball, I should say. A nice dunk. <laughs> and then did it splash? Anywhere? Gave it about a minute or so. Wait, how'd you do it? Where'd you put the Where'd you put the cup to do it? Did you How'd you do it? Was I it had just held the cup underneath. I don't believe you did yeah. it. I don't believe it. Why Where? don't you in believe the him? Where'd you do it? Where? Kitchen in the or bathroom? bathroom. You brought this? No, sauce I was in doing the it in the kitchen with workers standing <laughs> right there. I know. The guys do, doing yeah. cabinetry. <laughs> no, I went into the bathroom and just dunked them in for a minute and then took them out and then I, the whole time I'm in like, for a full minute That's for a like minute not, wow you committed well i was like because i mean on TikTok, people, it's like three seconds yeah people are like taking like little taps of their finger and like touching and like mm, it tastes like soy sauce like and that's what i was expecting so i i, I dunk them in and i'm sitting there licking my lips in. like like trying to get <laughs> trying to get that soy sauce taste to come through and I'm not tasting anything at all, guys. It nothing. It, nothing. I was tasting my Taco oh, Bell. That's all about no. it. There was no soy sauce or even a remote salty taste coming through whatsoever. So, unfortunately, it didn't work for me. And some guys are saying it works for them, which I honestly don't really believe them. Because scientifically, it's impossible since there's no cranial nerves connecting to the nut sack, to the brain. All right. <laughs> There's no like nerves that are yeah. sending that information to your brain that would be able yeah. to give you that taste sensation. <laughs> Damn. So unless some dude's got some magic ball sack or something. Well, that I'm can telling you, I've been watching stuff. TikToks and unless everyone's lying, they're saying because everybody they on taste TikTok the is legit. Mm-hmm. Everyone on TikTok is legit. That is the rule of the Internet. OK, <laughs> period. <laughs> That's on period. <laughs> Try it with Taco Bell sauce. See how that works out oh, for you. A little, little mild. Why don't I just Maybe get some? Maybe you have to use the hot to really. Habanero. Habanero. Hot sauce. Yeah, use the yeah. hot. Just get the Death habanero the pepper hot sauce and Tabasco and. <laughs> uh, it's. I think it's bullshit. Personally, I don't believe it. I'm not convinced, but I don't have balls to test it myself, <laughs> so I'll never know. Well, maybe I'll try some other substances. Let us we'll know. In what the if comments? you dipped your balls in like vodka? Do you think you'd get Ooh. drunk? Because like mm. they have thin skin to absorb things. <laughs> yeah. I think that works if you do it with like your toes or something. Yeah. You can get drunk off your toes. I think if you like bathe in vodka. <laughs> oh my god. Actually, I don't know. I'm completely making that up. I have no idea. <laughs> um, but anyway. I don't know. You guys will have to let us know. So that's you the, want to dunk your balls out there? If you know, if you're a true fan, put it to the test. We'll see in the comments. Maybe they're all going to say that it it works. I'm I'm honestly curious. And then I won't believe I'm sure. you that you even did it. Okay, don't believe I'm me. I'm skeptical then. of your story. Okay, well maybe I I'll do it again later. More if I was a police officer. Oh really? Wow, mm-hmm. she's that suspicious mm-hmm. of me for not doing this. Okay. Well, no, Janelle How about says later? She saw the I do soy it again sauce for out you. In the kitchen, though, so. mm-hmm. I'll do it again for you in front of you later. 
Oh, that could That's be kind so of you fun. So you can watch. You can, mm, you can nice. actually examine the experiment. Nice. All right. This is a major change in content. <laughs> let's, um, let's revert back. <laughs> Dear God, We're let's get to... into moon theories. All right. Yes. But before that, we need to thank our first sponsors for today. Breaking news. This important PSA is brought to you by Manscaped.com. This is your pubic service announcement. The Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. I've been using Manscaped's lawnmower for a while now, and this thing is magical. I love the Lawnmower 3.0. It is a premium product, and by premium, I mean the battery will last up to 90 minutes per charge, so you can take a longer shave. And one of the coolest new features is that the LED light, which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming experience. They've also upgraded to a 7,000 RPM motor with a quiet stroke technology. And let's not forget about the charging stand. Sirs, that's probably the coolest thing is the charging stand. It charges right up on your counter and a little dock for you. So it's always ready when you need it. So trim that junk of yours. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code milehire at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code milehire. Did you know that postage rates have gone up again? Well, thankfully, Stamps.com eases that pain with big discounts off post office retail rates. With Stamps.com, you can save five cents for every first class stamp and up to 40% off shipping rates. That kind of savings really adds up, especially for a small business. And the best part about Stamps.com is it's completely online, meaning you don't have to have the hassle of going to the post office. It's very convenient and you don't even have to leave your house. Stamps.com brings all the service of the U.S. post office right to your computer. Whether you're a small office sending invoices or an online seller shipping out products or even a warehouse sending thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle all of it with ease. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses have already used Stamps.com. Right now, our listeners can get a special offer, and that includes a four-week trial, plus free shipping, plus free postage, and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Mile Higher. That's stamps.com and enter mile higher. Working out is hard. It's always been hard. Bomba socks can't change that, but they can make it more comfortable. So if your resolution is to get fit this year, start by getting socks that can keep up every step of the way. When I got my first pair of Bomba socks, I was a little bit skeptical about how could these socks be any different than any other pair of socks I've ever owned. But I got to say, I was pleasantly surprised when I put them on. They are super comfortable. They give you a lot of arch support. They definitely feel like they're made really well. They're stylish and they come in all sorts of patterns and colors. But one of the number one things I like about Bombas is that they actually donate socks to people that need them. They're made with lightweight poly cotton blend, which means no matter how hard you're working, your feet will stay cool, dry, and comfortable, never sweaty. They also provide support in places you didn't even know you needed, like your arches. Each sock is built with a special arc support system that's supportive, but not too tight. Also, one of the things that I love about their low rise socks, you know, if you wear vans or anything like that, they've got a little bit of extra support there in the back on your heel. Cause sometimes when you wear vans, they kind of slip on your heel. So it's nice to have that extra support back there and protection so that you're not getting blisters when you're wearing your favorite shoes. Seriously, if you haven't tried Bomba socks, I highly recommend them. They are comfortable and they give back to those in need. What more could you ask for? So if you're interested, go to bombas.com slash milehire today and get 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash mile higher for 20% off. Bombas dot com slash mile higher. So let's start out by talking about some moon creation theories, because that is one of the biggest mysteries of all time. And that is how did the moon get there and how was it formed? What is it? What is it? Yeah, is it exactly. Made of cheese? <laughs> Maybe. The questions we all want to know the answers to. That is what we are going to try to answer today. I don't know about the cheese part. What Can't if it really was made I. of cheese? That'd be kind of lit. That would be. Wouldn't what kind of just, cheese like, would it even be? Run by and get some parm. Is the moon made of Swiss cheese? 
I hope not. Swiss is gross. I get Parmesan vibes. It should be made personally. of like a few different, like a whole gouda? cheese board. Ooh, a gouda. A nice smoked gouda. I just feel like because it's so damn old and probably hard as fuck that Parmesan is the closest. Personally. Aged Parmesan. Maybe like Asiago. Oh, yeah. Aged. It's funny how like that's a children's book. Yeah. Like who came up with that idea? I don't know. The kind of just looks cheese. like a wheel of cheese from Earth. Especially what I've it has holes thought, in it, yeah, that's Swiss-y. what I always thought. Like the holes on it was kind of mm-hmm. a Swiss cheese thing. Mm-hmm. Anyways, the, the moon is not cheese. Damn. But the moon is the Earth's only natural satellite, and it's the fifth largest moon in the entire solar system. But what's interesting is that it's the largest among planetary satellites relative to the size of the planet that it orbits. So the fact that the moon is as large as it is is kind of a mystery. It doesn't really make sense based upon the ratio of it, as well as like how is earth's gravitational pull so strong that it's able to keep such a large moon in it's in such close orbit around it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting when you think about it because it remains in a synchronous rotation with the earth in a perfect circle. That's also, how is it? It all seems too perfect. It does. Well, I think the entire universe seems too perfect. It's true. I think the human body is too perfect. I think life is too perfect to be that's, an accident. I mean, that's probably the argument most people would make is like, it's all magical. It's all, yeah. you know, too perfect and too good to be true. That's, but I don't know. That's what, yeah, it's kind of how I personally feel. I think the moon has like a purpose deeper. Meaning. Well, especially if you believe that it has some sort of like divine energy to mm-hmm. it. And it's, and I do. And you believe that the celestial planets are, living organisms in a sense and have their own sort of conscious consciousness to it yeah Yeah, well same thing conscious living same thing yeah so that's one way to look at it but when you when you dig into it even deeper you start looking at you know all the dark volcanic maria which is all the dark uh places on the planet that you see on the moon Mm -hmm. you mean yeah on the planet planet. (laughs) it's not a planet you're right (laughs) josh is a little tired our dog had a stomach issue last night we were up during the night up late she didn't she did wake us up she was pooping in the bed (laughs) (laughs) preparing us for parenthood you never know what you're gonna get on this podcast sorry guys no you you never know (laughs) (laughs) but what's interesting is that after the sun the moon is the second brightest regularly visible celestial object in the earth sky and the fact that in when you look up at the sky the sun and the moon are the same size Mm -hmm. because you know when you have the total lunar eclipse right they perfectly cover up each other i've always completely. thought about that so they are the same size i thought the moon was smaller no the, physically they're 400 right. times but it's right right okay a huge okay. difference yeah. i was like i was very confused then because right no well, but that does confuse me like how so it's we because, see well, it differently from the earth obviously because they're so much further apart right exactly so the sun's way the hell out mm-hmm. there right but it's so large that mm-hmm. it just happens to appear the same size to us on the planet as which is the interesting moon. like i never really thought about that it's not like the moon is like two times bigger than the sun or vice versa they're they're pretty much the same well and what's weird is that this is like unique to our planet as far right. as we know there's no other planet in the solar system where this this happens the sun and the moon the sun and the moon are the same size in the sky to us yeah to whoever's on the planet mm-hmm. interesting so when you think about that it makes you wonder there it seems to me like there's something truly unique about the relationship between the moon and, and earth i completely agree with that That they're very heavily tied together i think the moon and the sun and our relationship to earth is all i think it's all connected and important right. well and that's that's true in the sense that ancient civilizations have been recording this mm-hmm. these types of things since the beginning of time mm-hmm. and they've ob- observed this far before we ever did yeah and they've always considered the moon and the sun to be sacred objects to our right, planet right you know so much so that some cultures have gods that are completely dedicated to the moon or the sun exactly well to all the celestial bodies mm-hmm. and just the mere fact that astrology was ever created right totally. you know there's a lot of significance and i think it's always interesting when you think about ancient civilizations and how they were able to come to this realization that there was something more powerful and divine to the planets and, and the moon uh, the, and the moons themselves. I mean, all the moons across the solar system mm-hmm. um, are all very unique and in, in, in their own way. Um, and why do, why does earth only have one moon when many other planets have multiple moons? Also cultures, 
actually were able to follow the cycle of the moon, the waxing and the waning of the moon. Yes. As well. They were able to track that all the way through a full moon to a new mm-hmm. moon and then back back again. And how they incorporated those into their calendars and, and texts and everything else mm-hmm. is, is really interesting. Uh, and the fact that, you know, like in other cultures, a full moon would somehow ha- in, indicate that there could be darker forces at play. People start acting kind of crazy and, and mm-hmm. things happen. I, I think I had a cop once tell me that when the full moon is out, that crime increases. Like there's an oh, uptick yeah. in, in activity and in, in calls that they go to yeah. during and a full moon. We've at, we've talked about this on the podcast before. And we've had, I remember nurses saying, yes, when the full moon happens, we get way more you know, patients coming into the ER with crazier accidents. And there's like way more drunk driving and like people get a false sense of uh, bravery and that things just happen. I mean, whether you believe it or not is kind of up to you. It's not able to be proven by any means, but it's interesting. A lot of police say that a lot of EMS say that nurses, just people that work those type of emergency situations yeah. during the night or during the day. It doesn't matter. It's, the moon doesn't have to be out for us to be affected by its energy. Right. Yeah, no, it's, it's that whole aspect of it and how it actually physically impacts us. And obviously the earth's gravity and its pole affects the tides and, and, you know, the length of the day and everything else is, is interesting too. Mm -hmm. Um, it really does have an impact on us. So how did we get a moon? As far as we know, the moon is thought to have formed about 4.51 billion years ago not long after the earth. So a lot of scientists and astronomers believe that the moon formed around the same time as the earth. Um, There's several theories as to exactly how it went down. One of them is the captured moon theory. And this basically suggests that the moon may have actually originally formed elsewhere in our solar system, perhaps even around another planet before it was grabbed by earth's gravitational pull because other planets have captured their moons in, in the same type of way where they grab a large celestial object with its gravitational pull into orbit around them. And that's potentially what happened with our moon. Maybe it was already formed somewhere else in space. And at, you know, at the early stages of earth, it was had a, maybe had a much stronger gravitational pull and it pulled something as large as our moon into its orbit. Interesting. Because that's the whole thing and kind of the debate is like, how does something as large as our moon get pulled into with a planet the size of the Earth? The Earth's big, but it's not that big in comparison if you look at Jupiter or Saturn or some of these other large gas giants and the amount of, you know, even they don't have as many large moons in you know, with the same ratio of size. It's, it's interesting that like, why doesn't Jupiter have some giant moon that mm-hmm. appears as large as the sun? It's only earth. It's like, it doesn't have to be a certain way. Clearly there's, there's no formula to it. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah. Or we just don't know. Have life. Maybe it has to be a certain ratio in order to have life. So when you say that it would have come from another planet, possibly, does that mean Mars? Yeah. Like Venus or Mars. Like, so it was like obviously a close planet. So maybe That's interesting, maybe at but one, how did it form for them? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it could have doesn't really answer the question of how it formed. Maybe. I mean, in, in this theory, maybe it was an asteroid at one point and over time of orbiting, it gets hit and hit and hit and hit and continues to build mass to it. Mm-hmm. But this theory has been largely dismissed because of the actual makeup of the moon itself. It's made up of the same raw materials of the earth for the most part. Mm-hmm. So that's why people connect the earth to the moon so much is that it's made up physically of like the same materials. So the next theory is called the fission theory. And, and essentially what this theory says is that the moon was once a part of the earth, but it was cast off by earth's rapid spin. So if you picture, you know, if you had like a ball, a g- ball of paint that was spinning around mm-hmm. and if it spins around fast enough, uh, globs of it are going to fly off of it. Right. Mm-hmm. So in this theory, the earth was spinning extremely fast. I mean, we're talking really, really fast. Mm-hmm. Nothing could like live on it pretty much. I would think because of how fast it would be spinning. So this is early on in history so of the planet. What would that have been like if we were on the planet? We would literally feel it spinning probably. Yeah, or we wouldn't be able to be on it at all. Like it would, it would well, fly. Yeah, it'd know, be flying things could, off. Of I it. wonder what it would look like. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I guess the clouds would be like flying by. <laughs> I don't Crazy. think we could even like keep our feet on the ground in that sense because 
in order no, i know it's not possible i'm saying if it were possible what would it look like? if it were we'd all be dizzy as fuck we'd be it'd be <laughs> like the answer it'd be like we'd a merry-go-round with like booster jets on it flying you around so fast yeah but in this theory the moon eventually flies off of the earth and forms its own moon and that just like makes no sense that sounds like we have no fucking idea how it formed so here's our best guess like what that it just spun so fast that a perfectly circular moon flew off of it and formed over time over over millions and millions of years i just don't believe that it's like doesn't make sense to me why is it so even that's what i don't and why wouldn't we have like 50 moons then right right because if it's spinning yeah. wouldn't like smaller chunks and then a big chunk and then another yeah. chunk like or did they all fuse together to make the bunch circle of moons. <laughs> right and how did they get so perfectly like even doesn't yeah i mean it doesn't make a lot of sense and that's no, why this theory is not the leading theory on how oh. the moon formed okay but that's there was leading. what's interesting there was a study uh back in 2010 that suggested that a natural nuclear explosion set up by the super concentration of radioactive elements may have provided the kick to dislodge a moon piece of the early earth into orbit, which that right there just kind of blows my mind a little bit. Cause it's like a natural nuclear explosion of a super concentration of radio. So you have a bunch of radioactive elements all in one place on the planet. And somehow there's something that ignites an explosion and essentially blows up a piece of the earth, which is how the actual, piece was large enough to be the moon gets blasted off into space and around orbit but then again it's just just a theory i mean we have no idea so most scientists discount this right a lot of uh yeah most scientists uh do discount the fission hypothesis as it's called okay but the leading theory is the giant impact theory Mm -hmm. and this one's really interesting so this theory basically states that a ancient planet called thea in the early solar system collided with Gaia or the early earth around 4.5 billion years ago. So essentially the earth got pummeled by a smaller planet. I think they uh, estimate it would have been around like the size of like Mars or something. It was like good size, mm-hmm. a really good size. And the earth was much larger at that point. Mm-hmm. Like some people theorize that the earth was actually like a super earth. It was actually much, much larger than it is right now. Wow. And, you know, so if you think if you took Mars and Earth and mashed them together, what, how big of a planet would you get? It'd be quite a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine if we were living on that Earth right now, the planet would be huge, way bigger. We'd have a lot more space for all the fucking people we have. We would. That would be great. And for the animals, there'd be, I mean, who knows what, what how different life would have been. I mean, maybe we'd even have still have dinosaurs or something like Ooh. potentially. That's really interesting to think about. I never thought about how the earth could have been bigger at one point. Millions of years ago, billions of years ago, it could and have it been much larger yeah. and a planet came flying in. Cause if you think about it, there's shit flying around in space all the time. So there's, mm. you know, not every planet is orbiting around a star necessarily. There's things that are moving actively all the time. And this Thea planet came crashing into the earth and essentially hit it. And the impact sent the earth, you know, like a ball. If you hit a ball at a high rate of speed, it starts mm-hmm. spinning. So the earth, when it, they hypothesized that when it got hit by Thea, the earth was spinning so fast, it was creating five hour days. Wow. So it was spinning really fast. Jeez, that'd be crazy. You'd never be able to get anything done. The five hour day. <laughs> Can you imagine? No. If it's you only crazy. had five hours in each day, it'd you'd just like, be like, how many yeah. more days in a year you'd have? Yeah. I wonder what the math is on that to figure out how many days we'd That's have so with a five hour day. Think about. Go from a 24 hour day to a five hour day. Wow. That's so weird. I think time moves fast now. Time would be moving really yeah. fast then. Makes time think about really how old now. you would be then. You'd be like, oh, I'd be hella old. I don't know how to do any math. So the five I have no hour idea, day. But really, yeah, because then. How many days would be in a year? I'd be like four or five times older than I am now. We'd all be a lot older. Yeah. Or maybe we'd live longer. I don't even know. That's like trippy to think about. <laughs> it really is. But so essentially this theory is that the Theia hits Earth, creates the moon as a result mm-hmm. of this collision. Mm-hmm. 
and the moon starts orbiting earth because the earth's got this clearly has got this gravitational pull that is very strong and the moon over time over millions of years forms and because it has its own gravitational pull is why you get the the sphere shape because you've got this pull of gravity all around it pulling all of these pieces into it and over time it creates the moon and then the moon slows the earth spin down is what they believe that over these millions of years, that's how it's slowed down to now a 24 hour day because of the moon. So the moon really changed everything Mm -hmm. for us. And yeah, important to us. It is. So maybe this giant impact theory is really how the moon was formed. So now that we sort of understand that, I mean, we don't even know what, how it actually happened, but, but this is just the leading theory that, scientists have let's talk about some of the conspiracies related to the moon Hmm. and why some people believe the moon may not be natural at all and in fact something artificial Hmm. let's get into it but before we do (laughs) (laughs) we'd like to thank our last sponsors for today i don't know about you guys but life can get so busy whether you have kids or you have pets and you're traveling And you feel like you never get to sit down with your significant other and do something fun and rewarding. Hunt a Killer gives us the opportunity to have fun, work together, and investigate crime in the comfort of our home. Hunt a Killer gets you off your phone and thrusts you and your friends and family into an ongoing murder mystery investigation, challenging them to decode ciphers, examine clues, and solve puzzles. It's like an escape room delivered right to your door. They literally ship you a box with a ton of different clues. And then oftentimes it looks really official, like some real evidence, like in a manila envelope and there's documents and police reports and you get to sift through them and really pour hours into each box to try and get a little bit closer to solving the case. So if your partner thinks they're too cool for Valentine's Day, Hunt Killer is the perfect gift. Hunt Killer has 2,000 five-star reviews and Fast Company named them as one of the most innovative entertainment companies of 2019. Probably the coolest part about Hunt Killer is that for every box that is purchased, they give a portion of that to the Cold Case Foundation to help fund real cold case investigations. So right now, just for our listeners, you can go to huntakiller.com slash milehire and use promo code milehire at checkout for 20% off your first box. Head to huntakiller.com slash milehire for 20% off and to show support for our podcast, huntakiller.com slash milehire. Did you know that many conventional deodorants contain aluminum, which forms a plug in your sweat glands and actually keeps you from sweating? Yikes, that's kind of disgusting to put in your body. And that's where Native comes in handy. Native's deodorant is made without aluminum, so you can feel better about what you're putting on your body. I love Native deodorant. I've been using it for about six months, I think, and I've seen a huge change. My body has definitely gotten used to it in that time, and that's my biggest advice to anyone trying out a natural deodorant is it is going to take a little bit of time to get used to it, but once you do, it's so awesome and so much better for you. The best part about Native is they have ingredients that you know, such as coconut oil and shea butter. You wear your deodorant every day, so you should be able to understand the ingredients that are in it. They have really amazing scents. They smell awesome. They have over 10 different scents. For example, they have coconut vanilla, lavender rose, cucumber mint. There's something for everyone because they come in a wide variety. So men, women, and even teens can use Native. And there's no risk to try. They offer free shipping on every order. So head to nativedeodorant.com for 20% off your first purchase with the promo code MILEHIRE20 during checkout. Again, that's 20% off your first purchase at nativedeodorant.com and use the promo code MILEHIRE20 during checkout. So the first conspiracy theory we want to talk about is probably the most popular theory, and that is the hollow moon theory. And this theory centers around whether or not the moon is artificial or not. And is it hollow inside? And what's going on in it if it is hollow inside or maybe it's some sort of alien spacecraft? There's a lot of theories kind of wrapped up into this hollow moon theory. But to understand where this theory even came from, you kind of have to know a little bit about the history behind sort of where it came from. And when we're talking about history in regards to this theory, we are talking about the Apollo missions that happened in 1969 to 1972. So NASA astronauts during this time placed seismic recording devices on the lunar surface to document artificial and natural moonquakes. 
and their equipment recorded activity ranging from meteorite strikes to man-made explosions and crash landings of Apollo rockets. But I don't think a lot of people really realize that we put a bunch of equipment on the moon during these Apollo missions. Yeah. I read a one article that said that there's 400 tons of human trash essentially on the moon. Wow. 400 there's tons? There's a shit. We left a shitload of stuff up there. Just and, from... and that's from, you know, pieces and, and mm-hmm. things that we've detonated. And that's to... not just the U.S., right? That's yeah. Just that's everybody world. that's landed on the moon or been to the moon. Yeah. But there's 400 tons of, of actual trash or debris that's been wow. left there, including containers of astronaut poop. Oh, <laughs> I guess where else is it going to go? I well, Interesting. Yeah. I kind of thought they would just like let it off into space, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it just flies around space forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently there's containers of, of poop from <laughs> the so Apollo gross. missions just chilling on the moon. Ew. So, well, that's kind of cool for the astronauts. They're like, yeah, my shit is still up there. Yeah, they left a piece of, piece them of themselves up, up on the moon. Literally. Maybe they took a moon rock back with them, but they left something for the moon as well. Exactly. Beautiful, really. Yeah, it kind of is. It's kind of like a... Uh, beautiful, really. <laughs> it is beautiful. <laughs> there forever. So that when other astronauts mm-hmm. visit, they're like, oh, yes. Here there's is- Buzz Aldrin. There's <laughs> yep. Neil Armstrong's container. What if they're all clear? I don't know so if it's like that. Through? God, this I podcast has clear. been wild so far. It's nasty today. <laughs> yeah, it is a little... <laughs> A little nasty, yeah. That's a good word for it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the astronauts were given these Apollo lunar surface experiment packages in order to set up these seismographs, um, as well as initiate these detonations that they did. And in addition to that, they intentionally crash landed the Apollo 12 module, as well as the rocket, setting off an explosive force equivalent to nearly 12 tons of DNT or DMT. 12 tons I was going to say DMT. <laughs> Wow, you TNT. can see where my mind is. Wow, twelve <laughs> tons of DMT, <laughs> twelve tons crazy. of TNT was how big of an explosive force it was on the moon. And because they were measuring all of this, they found out that the moon rings like a bell and reverberates mm-hmm. for hours at a time. So they're able to measure all of this. Which you hit it with that much. I mean, I guess. That's a lot, but is it enough to, if the moon is truly completely full all the way through, you know, with materials, could it reverberate or ring like they measured? Have we been able to test the same thing on like the earth or something? Yeah, it doesn't do it on the earth. Interesting. But the moon, it did huh. based on what we measured. So that's why people think it's hollow. Yeah. Well, yeah. And we, we also realize through different sorts of tests that the based on the composition of the moon it's significantly less dense than the earth is so we know for a fact that it's way less dense it's and cheese could <laughs> that's why it's less cheese dense. cheese actually cheese if it were cheese it would be very <laughs> dense cheese so another thing that the apollo astronauts noticed when they were on the moon conducting all these different tests was that when they attempted to drill into these craters on the moon, they were barely able to penetrate the surface of them because of how just hard the actual surface itself was and what it was made of uh, titanium and mica and brass. And so it, they weren't able to drill down deep at all compared to like the earth. It's, you know, fairly easy to drill down in comparison. So maybe that tells us that it did not come from the earth. Right. Well, not only that, just, the sheer fact that maybe the actual, you know, there's some type of metal structure, a titanium structure mm-hmm. built, you know, underneath these craters, awesome. which is why they're like, you know, it'd be like drilling down and hitting a metal treasure chest or something. You can't, it's, I feel like they you could hit something. feel the difference though, between drilling down onto metal and just drilling down into a hard surface. Yeah. That's a strong maybe. Well, I think it was, they were able to do very little drilling at all when they expected to be able to drill down in decent ways and they weren't able to, when they were drilling in some of these craters, they also noticed that the way that the craters were shaped were very odd. Cause obviously when you look at a crater it's hit by an asteroid or something mm-hmm. like that, but the actual depth and width of them in some of the narrower ones, they'd be deeper than some mm-hmm. of the wider ones. So it was like very, it almost in a sense, like it looks like they were almost placed there. Does that make sense? Like, and it, it it didn't make sense to them that a smaller crater would necessarily be wider 
than a deeper crater that was less wide. Does that make like the way the proportions of the actual craters themselves didn't didn't necessarily make sense. Some of them, at least. I think it's also hard, though, to understand the moon because it's just so foreign to us. And unless you've like experienced this material that it's made of, how would you really understand? You know, maybe different areas have different types of soil or softness and you know yeah i mean we don't know you're right we don't know yeah i mean i don't think that proves anything well then the skeptical of this yeah if you can't tell yeah i know but the last fact is that some of the craters appeared to be uh convex versus concave so Hmm. concave meaning inward like something hit them and some of them are Mm -hmm. out like like an in ear and outy belly button in a sense like, like something's pushing out from inside right pushing up like a dome well how do they know it's not just like a hill or a mountain or- well there are long other craters that are the opposite so mm. you're like a pattern almost like different areas okay just a just a thought <laughs> just a thought maybe the craters are windows of some sort or some type of ceiling it's possible but it there's not a lot of consistency between the landscape on the moon is essentially what, what we found from the Apollo missions is that there's a lot of different things that don't really make sense to us at first glance and the materials with it being so, uh, so hard to drill down and all of that. Maybe there's something else beneath the surface that is sort of reinforcing this or creating this, you know, different looking craters and things like that is essentially uh, the thought there. So thanks to the Apollo missions, we started to be able to gather interesting data about the moon through and all the seismic activity that was happening on it. And when all this data started sort of coming out, there was actually two Russian scientists in July of 1970 named Mikhail Vasin and Alexander Sherbakov. And they published an article in the Soviet journal Sputnik entitled, Is the Moon the creation of alien intelligence. So their theory is is very interesting, maybe a bit far-fetched, but essentially what they believe is that the moon is not a completely natural world, but a planetoid that was hollowed out in the far reaches of space by intelligent beings. So if you hollowed think hollowed out. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that believe that there if there is aliens or extraterrestrial life out there and they had, are super advanced so like a type, you know, a type five civilization or something much, much higher. You know, we've talked about like Dyson spheres, building structures around mm-hmm. stars and things like that. I would assume that it would be this type of alien civilization that would be capable of hollowing out such a large, you know, planetoid yeah. object like a. Wouldn't it like break apart if it was hollowed out? Yeah. It, well, I think the idea is that they, what they would do is they would reinforce the structure of it from within. So you would leave oh. you would leave the crust and the layer around the outside, but you would create this metal inside. And then you could use it as like a base or a exactly yeah. like an so observation point. Mm-hmm. So you could take it to whatever you know planet you wanted to or star system you wanted to, and, and observe what was happening while also remaining co- you know covert, like hidden away where nobody would be able to tell that there was anything happening there at all. They just think, oh. You know, it's just this moon that's there. And then they, it says that they tow it to earth. Yeah. Apparently, according to these guys, they believe that they towed the moon to the earth with a comet, which I don't even know how you would do that. Like, I don't even know if a comet would be capable of pulling something like that. Mm, Yeah. That's really, that's interesting. I feel like that would be so fast. How do you aim a comet to like go to earth? Yeah. How do you drive one? Yeah. Can you drive it? interesting theory though yeah and it's interesting to me you know like the fact that they're scientists i'm like hmm i'm like there's gotta be i mean i've never read their art their article Mm -hmm. i Um, feel like i can't judge their theory so they might have some some math and physics to back this up Mm -hmm. but i i think it's definitely i think they really put this out there as like just a theory you know something to entertain um as a possibility Mm -hmm. but what they're saying is that based upon what we observed on the moon with the large cavities, the craters, and, you know, all of the dark spots, the light spots, they're saying that essentially those are all from aliens using heavy machinery to go and create all of these craters and things like that to kind of give it the look that it has right now. 
Wow. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. <laughs> I'm sure it took a long time to, to do all that. What's something interesting too that I came across was that they believe that this theory explains why the moon might actually be older than the earth. I've seen some things that they've found moon rocks that predate the existence of the earth. Mm -hmm. And so they're thinking, well, you know, that could be evidence that this was around much longer than the earth was at all. So therefore, how could it have been a part of the earth ever? So it must have either not orbited anything at one point or orbited something else. Yeah. Or just came from or a different was something place. Else, or right. was a planet or exactly. Was something else. Interesting. Exactly. Which I mean, I tried to look up to see if there was actual, you know, research to back up if there's moon rocks older than the earth and I couldn't really find anything, but I have seen some things online like they're 5 billion years old or something. But I mean, who yeah. really knows? That's know the thing with conspiracies. That. You just, yeah. you never really know fully because there never seem to be, I mean, you they're know, not confirmed sources for anything. I mean, some of them, some of them check do. out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. Actually. Not all. That's but right. Yeah, not all theories. No. <laughs> but this, this one specifically one for sure. But then what's interesting is that as far as we know, there's no, um, you know, real evidence of, of liquid water, obviously on the moon, but that their scientists do believe through research that there could be millions of gallons of water within the moon. And so maybe like some of the seismic activity that was being detected through the equipment, the Apollo missions left was due to maybe like if you were to think about the way that I like to think about this is like the, the death star from star Wars. Like it's like a planet looking spacecraft inside of the moon yeah and that's so how I picture it too yeah exactly like that and if you had water you know if there's water vapor like steam coming out of a vent off of the spacecraft that maybe with the seismic activity and stuff maybe it's indicating that there's water within and potentially pipes running or something where mm -hmm. water's being pumped through it and that could explain you know the evidence for there being water within the moon but mm -hmm. i mean that's essentially what they were trying to say but then again, this is just a theory that the moon is some type of spacecraft or that it's been hollowed out. But what is interesting about the moon, and especially with the Apollo missions, is the fact that astronauts reported seeing UFOs when they visited the moon. And so right. this, this coupled with this theory and everything, has is really what created this speculation and, and theories about aliens having bases on the moon or being within the moon mm -hmm. is really stems from these Apollo missions because back in 1968, as Apollo eight moved into orbit around the moon, the astronauts spotted a colossal extraterrestrial object, which then had disappeared on the next orbit. Photographs were taken, but not released to the public. So the, and this is all, all real stuff. We've had multiple astronauts come forward and say that they've seen UFOs, and uh, Gordon Cooper is one of them who, who saw some interesting things. But NASA itself has never confirmed any sort of UFO sightings on the moon or in space for that matter. Um, but actually on another occasion, when the lunar excursion module is down to four to five miles from the moon's surface, astronauts witnessed a UFO suddenly rise from a crater and rapidly disappear. But perhaps the most popular astronaut really and astronaut that is seen in ufo is buzz aldrin in 1969 when he was checking the lunar surface from orbit when two ufos appeared and moved towards the apollo rocket hovered nearby then to buzz aldrin's astonishment joined together to form one entity these multiple ufos yeah everything buzz aldrin says is really interesting like he goes pretty hard he does and what's interesting is fairly recently i think it was like 2018 they gave him a lie detector test about this really yeah who who did buzz aldrin did uh or i forget the uh, agency that actually gave it to him oh like an actual i think agency it was gave it to him i don't know i don't know the details of specifically on it i can't remember if it was like a some type of media that gave it but i think it was some sort of agency that gave him a lie detector test about this and he passed it um as far as did you see you know ufos when you visited the moon which is really interesting considering they were on the moon at all yeah because it really does make you wonder why they were there and what they were doing there i mean i definitely am more inclined to believe that aliens possibly have a base on the moon or like use the moon mm -hmm. as like a halfway point right. or like if they do monitor us in some way i don't know if i fully believe it's like hollowed out and they're in 
you know, in there, but there's structures inside or anything. Yeah. Right. But I mean, it does make sense like why they would want to have something closer to the planet if you were observing it or if, if it turns out they work with, <laughs> there's a lot of theories out there that they have partnerships with humans, humans. here on earth and yeah. agencies. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe there's a base that they both share. Up absolutely. There. I feel like that's more believable than the hollow thing. Although I do, you know, think it's possible. Yeah, I mean, it's just hard. The biggest things for me are all the coincidences with the moon and, you know, why is everything things. so perfectly aligned? Why is everything so perfectly shaped? And Well, see, I explain that personally to myself, just my own beliefs, you know, that that's just the way it is, that there's a divine, right? you know, whether you want to call it a god or an energy or whatever, that there's something that created this. And there's it's not just science and it can't be explained maybe because... Not everything can be explained. Right. That's what I personally think. But. It's something above science, what science can explain right. that created all this. and That's what I think, yeah. I, I would say probably the majority of people believe that. Mm -hmm. That it's be kind of beyond our comprehension and right. you know, science may never be able to explain. I mean, it's the same way we can't explain why the universe is made. Right. You know, I don't think we're meant to understand it fully. Yeah. I don't think humans are capable or intelligent enough to understand our universe fully. Mm -hmm it operates much higher than we do. Right. I think. <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right. I mean, maybe not. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, who really knows, it's fun right? To ponder though. Mhm. Mm but the fact that so many astronauts have reported seeing UFOs and and mm -hmm. interesting things on the moon and, I mean, and I in space it. in general, it's Why would they lie? Right. Why would you lie? And if anybody knows, when did you think they would? Right. I mean, I'm going to believe someone who's actually been up there mm -hmm. before I believe someone who debunks them. That's mm -hmm. never been. Yeah. So that's all been confirmed. And, you know, when you think about the fact that, well, you know, what are UFOs? Are they extraterrestrial craft? Is there like aliens piloting these craft or mm -hmm. the fact that these craft seem to some of them seem to actually form together into an entity in itself? It makes you wonder, are some of these craft even the entity, the actual being? Like are the craft, the living the technology, organism, it's, like AI, it's a technology kind of. that is also a living conscious thing. That's interesting. And that's why Could they're be. so they're that. able to manipulate time and space and come in and out of, uh, you know, it may not just be this ultra high advanced technology. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess it could be created by some civilization mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah. Like you said, AI, maybe it's super advanced mm -hmm. alien AI from some distant star system that is roaming the universe. You know, or it's its own just organs, organism or species altogether. Well, if you think about it, like if our technology keeps advancing, we're obviously going to have robots. And then what's next? Is there right. going to be consciousness for robots? And eventually maybe cars will have consciousness and planes and definitely UFOs could too. Right. So maybe once you get to a certain level that, you know, we can't comprehend that right yeah. now. So it might sound just ridiculous to people, but. Is. Or they're just like light beings because a lot of these UFOs that especially when it comes to the moon stuff are like beams of light like mm. orbs almost mm. orbs that they saw floating around the craters and coming out of the craters and stuff. So I don't know, man. It's it's super interesting now. But one of the other things um, when it comes to the moon is the fact that ancient cultures have written many cultures have written a time before the moon even existed at all. Yes, that is really interesting. Many and a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how the moon came to be and like people or cultures have different, you know, interpretations of that, whether they think God brought it or it just arose. Or, yeah, you know? yeah. But yeah, a lot of them do have stories of how it right. came and how it wasn't there. For mm -hmm. It must have been dark. Or they were able to night. explain, yeah, explain how it got there. In how, their, did, how did our orbiting even work? When so hard to think about yeah well i mean a moon. Uh, without a moon things would be definitely different on on the earth mm -hmm. which they could have been very different here and could have affected the way people lived here and did things or maybe there was something else that was kind of controlling everything i mean who knows because who knows really how how much technology the ancient civilizations even had in the first place as right. we're starting to learn mm -hmm. but it's interesting that also scholars have been quoted as saying there was a time before the moon as well like Aristotle wrote of Arcadia stating that the land was occupied quote unquote before there was a moon in the sky above the earth. Aristotle. Mm. Uh, the tribe of the Chibachas in 
Colombia also have such notions in their traditional oral legends. They state in the earliest times when the moon was not yet in the heavens. It's but, one, it's interesting that they don't say the sun. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of them do, but. But the one of the most interesting ones is the Zulu people of Africa, uh, which go back a really long time. Um, and they report that the moon was dragged across space from a great distance. Because when you start hearing about the ancient cultures and stuff, it does make you go to that ancient alien theory, you know, of that these ancient cultures were somehow interacting with extraterrestrials and were getting information directly from them somehow, in, yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Or, you know, the Anunnaki, like we've talked about before. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't discredit them. It's possible. It's very possible. So, because a, a lot of them do talk about how there was, like, all of this turmoil to the planet until this new heavenly body known as the moon came into orbit. Like things were just out of control until the moon came in and kind of stabilized the earth mm -hmm. through these ancient texts. Interesting. But one of the things that I think is most curious is the fact that we, we never see the far side of the moon. We never see the dark side of the moon as, as people call it. Yeah, that is interesting because the moon always faces us yeah. from one direction. Right. Like why, and we still have yet to map it completely. I mean, mm -hmm. the Chinese have a, a rover on it right now. That that's last year, right? yeah, that's roving around, starting to take pictures of things. But the Is fact that we haven't good? not so real. I mean, nothing crazy. I mean, they definitely have come across some interesting craters and stuff. Like, but didn't they found something by now? If there were like tons of bases, or, or but if the, we'll, we'll get to that because there's a whole there's a whole conspiracy about about bases and. And the fact that the types of bases that are there, like, I think people forget that if there is some type of bases there, it's not going to just be like, you know, a traditional military base. that's just sitting on the mm -hmm. surface of it. It's going to be camouflaged yeah. or, you know, mm -hmm. not sure. detectable to, to sure. us. Yeah. What's also interesting is it takes the moon 27.3 days to orbit the earth once. And at the same time, it also takes the moon 27 days to do a complete rotation on its own axis. So the fact that the moon's rotation as well as its orbit around the earth are always in sync to the point where one side is always facing away is, is really bizarre if you think about it. And, mm -hmm. and it seems almost like too, too perfect that one, this one side is always away from us. It's like, you know, somebody must have set it up that way, you know, like it's very weird that we never see that other side. It is weird that it doesn't spin at all. And it's, it's because they're perfectly in sync. So as this one spins, this is moving too. So right. it's always like We're right with right it. So spot. Yeah. yeah, so perfect. And it's hard to believe that if a, another planet came crashing in randomly, blows this thing up and then this thing starts orbiting and it all falls in sync perfectly. And there's one side that is never seen. I'm telling you it's too perfect. It's way too to have perfect. Just happened. And it seems like why wouldn't somebody or something take advantage of that perfect thing you know the ability to hide on this dark right. side of the moon yeah it's possible for sure i really think it's possible that they use the moon as some type of base it would make sense mm -hmm. i mean you don't have to worry about people with telescopes being you know, like even with my camera that i have the fact that i can right, like yeah zoom, i can zoom in and literally see mm -hmm. the individual craters with my zoom lens mm -hmm. and you know you can look all over the 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 moon and there's no structures on it from what I can see and from what other people see with telescopes and everything. Mm -hmm. But like really good telescopes. But no one knows what's on the other side. Well yeah. maybe we will. Yeah. You know. Hopefully we will soon. How long is it gonna take? But why is it pictures? taking so long? Yeah. Why haven't we done it yet? We have the ability to do it right now. Why haven't we done it? And it's the same thing with like Antarctica. There's like zones of the moon you're not allowed to go to. It's like it's very weird. Yeah. It's very sketchy that there's not you think there would have already been like an exploration of the other side of the moon? Like, why were they like, oh, we're just gonna like check out this one part and then we're gonna stop all of our all Apollo moon mission. missions? Yeah, all the moon missions. And in what seventy two, it's been yeah. years. Yeah, years like since years, we've been back. What? Yeah, over right. that. Yeah, we're going over. on fifty years. It's twenty twenty seventy two. Yeah, I think almost they started in seventy. They, no, started, they started in sixty nine and went through seventy two and then it stopped. That's insane. That's a long time to not go back to the moon. And you're telling me that we, that they just like got everything need, needed. 
Mm-hmm. And they that, didn't care the about the thing. other side. Yeah, yeah they it didn't. It is weird. They weren't it's like weird. they weren't like, oh, what about the other side? Maybe we should see what's over there. Nobody mm-hmm. ever said that. NASA was never curious about. And how come our rovers never capture the other side? Why is it just now China's doing that? Like, wouldn't we have done that a long time? You would ago? think we'd put it. Why aren't? Why doesn't everybody have a rover on the moon? Right. Why isn't there? You know, why isn't there an established base on the moon? Yeah. How we are about everything else? Yeah. It's kind of weird. It just seems like there's a reason for why we haven't been back, especially since. You know, like we're the internet. NASA's like we're gonna put a hotel on the International Space Station. They're all like happy about that for the ultra rich to pay fifty million a night why to go. Why would they put the hotel on the moon? Stay. That's what I'm saying. Is like there's it's a re- there's a reason why we're staying away from the moon. Let's just put well, it that way. Well, I guess way. it would be really hard to get people to the moon to a hotel. It's a lot farther. <laughs> that's yeah, it's a longer yeah. trek than the space station. Yeah, you're staying yeah. there a while before right. you're coming home. Yeah. Also, the other side of the moon looks so different than what we see. Mm-hmm. Like it's so much, there's so many more craters and it just looks like it's been beat up way more yeah. than the near side. And I always kind of wonder why that is. Well, it's because it's facing out into space versus the inside is protected, you know, like it's in between the earth at all times. So there's a le- there's a less likely chance of it probably being hit from something coming from deep space or something like that. Can we tell when the moon gets hit by stuff? Like, do we keep track of that somehow? Or do we have no idea? Because you never hear about things hitting the moon. So I'm wondering if they even, like, that's so true. Do we even keep track of it? We never even worry about I feel like no one ever even talks about, like, what if a comet hits the moon? That would really screw us, wouldn't it? Well, something big enough, yeah, could (laughs) blow off a ton of uh, pieces off of it. Yeah, exactly. It's very weird. I don't know, man. (laughs) All I know is that it's the perfect place to put some structures if you wanted to. Yeah, if you want to hide some shit, put it on the other side of the moon, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that and you know, even structures on the side facing us, there's a lot of people that believe there's evidence of at one time there being structures on the side that we can now see real well with technology and telescopes and everything like that that was there for a very long time, potentially even ancient civilization that may have inhabited that side of the moon. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's could be evidence of that based on images that NASA has. So obviously NASA has all of these, you know, probes and different spacecraft and telescopes flying around taking pictures of everything. And so there's tons and tons of pictures in their archives that a lot of people have sifted through and started to kind of find Look interesting for looking for in anomalies in uh, photographs. And one of those people that has done a lot of that is Richard Hoagland. And a lot of people discount him and say that, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's crazy. And I mean, he, he has no, like, he's not like Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's not like an astrophysicist or anything like that, but he has found a couple interesting photographs that I wanted to show you guys. Cause I don't know. I don't know if I can just Whoa. full on say that this is something natural. So this first anomaly is probably the most famous one on the moon and it's called the shard. And you know, there's links to actually go look at these NASA images. So these are legit NASA images and it appears to show an artificial structure towering above the surface of the moon. It looks like a damn alien standing there. The thing about it though, is it's tall. We think it's like a mile tall. I was gonna tall. say, does it look like it's probably super tall? It's super tall. Um, I think it, I think they said it's like a mile tall God. and that there's this shadow so that can, uh, the shadow shows you that it is a tall, it almost looks like maybe like a rocket launcher or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people would say like an antenna or tower or something. Is that cross part of it? No, that's actually from the camera. Okay. I thought so. That's like the cross here. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that, that, but that's something that somebody captured with a, uh, one of the, I believe the Hasselblad cameras. Alien ghost. Yeah, and if you look at the zoomed in picture, it does look very weird. How do we know aliens aren't tall though? Maybe they're like really tall. Maybe. What if they're insane? What if they're giant? But what the hell is he doing? Just standing there and they just happen to. Oh shit, they caught me. (laughs) He's like a deer in headlights, just froze when he got his picture taken. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) But people are like, people that dispute this say that this is just like an optical illusion and that you know, this isn't really there or it's, you know, flashback or can be explained some other way. Right. Of course. Right. I don't know. That's but to me, it definitely looks like something sticking up out of the ground. Yeah, it really does. And I mean, look at it, it casts a shadow. Right. So clearly it's not like a fucked up. 
photo or something. Yeah, or it's not just like I don't know, like it's not like a someone's booger on the camera <laughs> lens or something. <laughs> it looks like it's actually there in the picture for sure. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is. Well, and when you see the enhanced photo, you're like, okay. It's like, well, what naturally could that be? I mean, some people say that this is just like an optical illusion based on the angle of the photograph. Because if you look at the enhanced, you could kind of look at, if you look at it kind of sideways, you could see how maybe it's actually a much smaller uh, little bump or a rock or something. And it's just like, you know, that's actually a crevice. Um, Because if you look at the... Hmm enhanced picture it kind of looks like it's embedded into the ground but the thing for me is it creates a shadow it's a clear shadow from that angle it does i guess but when you look at it from this angle i don't know so you guys will have to let us know what you think the shard the shard then there's this other photo here that supposedly proves that there are pyramids on the lunar surface and this is a real picture from nasa and if you look really closely i don't know where this is shot i don't know if this is on the surface or what, but it does appear to show some pyramid looking triangle. I don't know if you could even say pyramid because I can't quite see the um, the three sides here, but it looks like my hormonal acne. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like my face when I kick a bunch of makeup on that. Just protruding <laughs> from the skin there. I don't know though, but when you look at it from like a, like closely it does kind of look like a, a pyramid on the ground or something but then again i mean it's kind of it's faint that it's one so looks faint more natural and yeah it's very very faint and then uh this next picture people said you know is this just a hill or is this like some sort Whoa. of building or structure that does look or, like a building though i mean yeah it really look does. at the surrounding and it's then look at those two right there yeah Whoa, that's really symmetrical. That's a real picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, it kind of looks like almost a fortress. Yeah. Kind of embedded into the ground with like walls around it. And like you said, based on the diagram, you know, they've got like lines indicating that looks like a sloped ramp of some sort. It really does. And then when you kind of enhance uh, with the computer around it, definitely looks like there's something with a lot of right angles at the top. I mean, it looks like it has like a little roof on it, you know? It does. It definitely looks like almost a, like a place of worship or yeah, like a pyramid a, totally. type structure. It looks like something an ancient a temple or something. Would make. Yeah, like a temple. So, That's I mean, really cool actually. And it looks kind of half buried. Mm hmm. You know? Right. That's actually pretty compelling. That's probably the most interesting photo I've seen you know, that NASA has put out that people have found. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty It does cool. make you wonder. I mean, it does look like, I don't know. I just, it's hard to see how nature would have like, even in that top perfectly. building, it looks like, look at the structure around the top. There's clearly a square on the top. Right. And then there looks like there's windows. Mm -hmm. Like a and watchtower there's even points or something. Here, the fact that it's so symmetrical and matches so damn well, just the angles. There's no way that that formed that way. Yeah. It almost looks like it could be like some sort of like, entrance to an underground base or something oh that's really weird isn't it that is check out this next one though this is called the castle and it's this really it looks like the walt disney castle <laughs> kind of say, like it looks kind of like statue of liberty yeah of yeah it does it's a what the fuck is that pretty tall where is it like where <laughs> obviously it's on the moon <laughs> but like what is this of what am i looking at right now uh, some type of rock formation or something or structure that uh, mm. was taken with a handheld camera. See, not as compelling as the last one. Yeah, it definitely seems. That but, just looks like some. But if you like look at mistake. it, like it looks like it has pillars in the front. There's individual pillars there. Yeah. And then potentially something. Actually, it almost looks similar to the last one. I guess if you look at more sideways. Mm -hmm. But what angle is the picture supposed to be? Yeah, that's the thing is it's a, you know, doesn't give you a lot of detail around it. It's kind of weird how it's dark around it and it's yeah, just kind of sitting here. Maybe they uploaded a shit version of it because they don't really want you to see. Yeah, it seems almost like they blurred out the surroundings of it. Like Make this one a little more blurred. There's maybe more to this structure and they just kind of. Like, well, why would they upload it at all though? I don't know. Yeah, it's true. They have, they have the ability to not upload it.
And that's the thing with all of these, you know, you could argue that like if there was really a structure, why would they just upload this to the archive for us all to go look at? If they're, they were trying to hide the fact that they're, they made like some archeological discoveries on the moon and there's all these ancient ruins there. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's very weird, but this conspiracy is very interesting. And this is called the Clementine conspiracy or the project golden dragon. This is a real project that really existed that I honestly didn't hear of until recently. And essentially what this project was is in 1994, the department of defense and NASA's Clementine probe, uh, AKA the deep space program science experiment was sent around the far side of the moon before taking off into deep space. And while cruising the backside of the moon, the Clementine spacecraft beamed a series of topographic photos back to earth. And according to many conspiracy theorists, they show anomalies that can only be evidence of a former extraterrestrial civilization. Now there's not this is bold claim. There's not a lot of pictures that are out there from this mission because it was a top secret, uh, mm -hmm. highly classified mission that happened. But this is one of the photographs that it sent back of, uh, I don't even know what you would call that. It's not, doesn't look like a normal crater. That's a crater? The colored one? Yes, the colored one is a... Uh, it looks like an eye. It's obviously been colored, like they've added color to it. Oh, so you can like see Actually the see it, but, the, but if you look at it, it looks like there's this perfectly round circle, circular yeah. structure that they that it saw on the the back side of the moon the far side it was a pretty perfect circle yeah that's really weird looking that's looks like is inside of a crater like this what, also sorry but before i forget why does it on the bottom it's like flattened like if it was a crater wouldn't it go all the way in and you know like leave a circular situation in in the moon like it's flat like it's almost like something hit it and then something was so hard in the moon that it didn't allow it to like sink in like it's like mm -hmm. completely flat on the bottom right and i mean yeah i mean it looks like it's kind of like yeah like almost like it's like embedded in the ground or something like it's been flattened into right. the ground yeah because you can weird. tell like the the area around it is the actual crater itself you can see yeah. how the landscape changes and kind of flows down into this area but then you have this circular structure kind of laying in the middle of it. But when I look at this picture, I keep thinking of like an eye kind of, it looks like an eyeball. Yeah. Like that's an, what I thought at first, the iris and then the, or the retina. And then you've got the iris and the eye, actual eye itself around it. Yeah. And this, the second picture, definitely you can tell. Yeah. Like why wouldn't, why wouldn't it go hit further in or, you know, make a bigger impact. It does look like it all stops evenly at right, on the ground. Right, exactly. So if it was something natural that crashed into the moon, you would expect it to be in a million pieces, not in this type of circular structure still. Mm -hmm. And I mean, let's be real, like this was a top secret mission that the Department of Defense was involved in, uh, NASA was involved in, and has not been declassified oh, to this hasn't. day. Okay, interesting. So this is all this. I believe these are leaked photographs and obviously there's been, you know, insiders and whistleblowers that have, have given us a lot of this information about this mission, but the, perhaps the most interesting thing ab about project Clementine or uh, project golden dragon is that this next image is the actual golden dragon itself. And this image is supposed to be, a huge alien machine constructed from thousands of interlocking plates like scales on an alligator, hugging the moon's surface at the bottom of the Zeman crater, pretending to be an ordinary looking pile of rocks. What? That picture? Yeah. So when you, <laughs> yeah, when you look at it like at first TV glance, it, yeah, like... at first glance, it looks crazy, but. Whoa. It, but if you stare at it long enough, you start to see the dragon. Yeah, no, I see the dragon right away but I don't see what they just said, <laughs> whatever you just said. <laughs> uh, an alien base essentially made out of all these interlocking How, plates. Why do they think that? It honestly looks like natural to me, like water or version There's, or something. No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> How do you guys see a dragon? You don't see the dragon? Hell no, the, I don't the see a dragon. Eye, well, it almost looks yeah. more like a crocodile to me, like a crocodile head. Yeah. There's like an eye in the middle. Right. You can kind of see its head. And then there's a snout mouth, or And then it kind of goes down. Yeah. So you've got the. Yeah, it's like a stretch. It's definitely not an obvious dragon. <laughs> you have to look at it for a while. But if this is remotely real, again, we don't know if this is 100% real or not, but you this. Still see it? No, still don't see it. So, and that's the thing. Some people don't see Looks it. Looks like at a all. hammer to me, like a head of a hammer, <laughs> not a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> But if you look really closely, you can see the individual plate interlocking plates like armor almost. If you looked at if you ever look at like medieval armor, how it kind of overlays each other. What if it's Uh, just like sand? That would be very. That's a very (laughs) weird natural formation. That is weird. It's very bizarre if that's natural. I know, but it's the moon. We don't know how it works. But it is. I mean, it's possible that if there were to be some sort of structures or bases on the dark side of the moon why wouldn't they try to do something crazy hard to see like this to camouflage it so you don't really even notice it at first glance that makes sense i mean you'd probably want to disguise it pretty well because apparently this picture came from the actual spacecraft that was taking pictures of the dark side of the moon and why is it so like it seems so pixelated and right hmm it's almost like invisibility, like it's, it has some sort of technology built into it that our cameras can't even like pick up. So people think it's a dragon because they found out this is called Project Golden Dragon. No, no it's they they called it that because of that picture. Oh, vice versa. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the actual NASA's project is Clementine Probe. Gotcha. But then when we got a hold of this picture, we called it Project Golden Dragon, I believe. Where's the gold come in? I think there's probably there's more this picture is it's hard. There's literally I would have called it gray alligator head. (laughs) You can call it that. Okay. But yeah, based on this conspiracy, there's ancient ruins of hundreds of glass dome structures that extraterrestrials may have once lived in on the dark side of the moon. What I don't understand if is if if we're finding all these weird things with our Things that were, well, things, things that we're sending on the other side of the moon. Why are we not following up and sending like more specific probes or trying to actually land something on the far side of the moon and take a better look and get a better picture than what the hell that is? Because because we were never supposed to see that. Yeah, they don't want us to have it in the first place. We were never supposed to see this picture in the first place. Yeah, it's like send a it's better camera, cl- dude. It's all classified. It's terrible. That's the thing with a lot of this information is that a lot of it come is leaked. Mm. to that's why whistleblowers are such a the government hates them so much is because they, they leak get they leak these images and information that we were never supposed to see in the first place mm. and it's so crazy looking that the average person is going to dismiss it immediately and say that this is nothing and just you know go about their day and never question it or you know wonder if the government knows more and that's that's the thing. It all comes down to how how much do you trust NASA? How much do you trust you know government, the government yeah. and what they're doing in space exploration and what they actually mm-hmm. know? Do you believe that everything they know is public? <laughs> well, and for me, I I feel like a hundred percent that when those astronauts came back off those Apollo missions, that they were you know they were sat down like in, sure, in a room 100%. by somebody and said, you know what, if you ever say go out and talk about how you saw this or that or mm-hmm. you know there's a bullet for you. Yeah, even when they did that like press conference or interview Mm -hmm. or whatever they're doing, you can just see they're like, yeah, no. They're uh withholding so much information. They just look so paranoid. I'm like, dude, what's wrong with you? They act like the FBI sometimes. Yeah. I know. It's like space exploration, it's science. But that's the thing. There's so much secrecy. There's way too much secrecy around it. Well, the problem. People come up with all these theories because we like aren't told the truth. Well, and it's hard not to when NASA is literally working with all these. Uh, defense contractors so right. they're working with the military yeah nasa nasa portrays itself as like oh fun mm, science, science and space yeah. explore yay <laughs> but it's not it's way more involved with the military oh, and, yeah. and like they're they have secret spy planes they fly for the cia and everything like they're doing so much more secret missions and mm-hmm. and different things that we don't even remotely know about and the fact that we haven't been back to the moon is enough to make me question if this is real or could be real 
Yeah, I think it's very strange we haven't been back. Because, yeah, why the hell wouldn't we just go back and explore the whole damn thing, map it? I mean, so at everybody least can send see technology it. Yeah. to map it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And you, we know that we would be able to get better pictures than this. Yeah, it's, it's really bizarre. It's really weird. Yeah, the fact that they were able to, oh, I don't know, live stream the moon landing. <laughs> yet, 60s. for some reason, we haven't gone back to try and get a better picture than this. Yeah, something does not match up here. No, like what? Definitely not. What's the problem? Definitely Why can't not. you guys go back and try and get something better? You, whether yeah. I mean, maybe they have, and we just don't know. And maybe it's just yeah. this is all mm -hmm. they're going to allow us to see. Mm -hmm. Who right. knows? Which is what I believe. I think that there's. I think they know exactly what's there, and there's they're quite possibly already ha a base there that they send secret missions to. For all we know, I mean, we don't know. We have mm -hmm. no way to be able to tell if they're telling. Why the wouldn't truth we or, have a base? It would be smart to have a base, especially, and, and it makes sense too that there would be a base because we're already so focused on Mars. Have you noticed that? Like we're all like Mars, yeah. Mars, oh, yeah. Mars, Mars. You know, yeah. colony on Mars, put people on Mars. Yeah, and it's like that makes zero sense whatsoever. No. It seems plausible if we haven't even put a base on the moon yet. Mm -hmm. Like, why wouldn't that be the logical first step? Yeah, and just for the fact that it makes space travel so much easier to be able yeah. to use the moon as a launching point to right. other places. Right. So why wouldn't we have already been investing in building a base on the moon? It makes no sense. Totally. I totally think they actually do. Right. You know, it's just not talked about. Known. Yeah, it's just not known to the public. And it's like America's always been about the space race and the fight to be the first and stuff. Why would they let any other space agency be the first to get those photos of the other side of the moon when we have the equipment to do it, hands down? And yeah. Like they always blame funding and I understand like we don't give probably enough funding, but like, <laughs> come on. But we do. And and we know how much money goes into secret military things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that probably feeds into NASA. Right. Yeah. And in these unacknowledged projects yeah. that happen. Absolutely. I mean, absurd amounts of money just missing and unexplained. Yeah. Out of the budget. Mm -hmm. There's definitely, there's definitely way more going on than meets the eye and more, way more than we are told about that's for sure mm -hmm. they want us to believe that you know space travel is still such this new idea and you so underdeveloped and you know we're just yeah. it seems like we're still just like barely getting to the space station and back it's like really mm -hmm. that's the best that we can do right now i don't believe that for a second yeah i mean if elon musk can send his like car into like orbit like into deep space and stuff like <laughs> elon musk is already making nasa look terrible by yeah. being able to he's fund all of, of his own stuff projects and yeah, yeah created mm -hmm. private space dude. travel yeah. exactly right yeah he's and don't forget more. our friend robert bigelow oh yeah of bigelow aerospace mm -hmm. and he told us straight out man there's an et yeah. presence yeah do we need to play that clip we should play it <laughs> they took it offline what that's what's so weird too is i've noticed no. that clips all, that clip completely removed off of youtube you have, do we have it downloaded uh maybe i think there's a oh re-upload of it somewhere Let's that hope. i know of from we our presentation yeah. that we did yeah, yeah we I think showed I it at our a, live show yeah but it's been removed off youtube off the internet completely what? as well as this other clip of uh the story about buzz aldrin seeing a ufo on, on the crater when they landed wait just to explain though the the clip we're talking about of robert bigelow since we can't play it oh okay so robert bigelow he's which it's hilarious that more people don't know about him. Like we all know mm -hmm. about Elon Musk yeah. and Musk, 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 but people, Robert Bigelow flies on the, he's been funding research into UFOs and space travel for years, way, way before mm -hmm. Elon Musk was around. So Robert Bigelow was interviewed by 60 Minutes. And in this interview, he flat out tells the interviewer that he knows that there's an ET presence. He's completely sure of it. And he's put way more research and funding into mm -hmm. researching this topic than anybody else. I mean, he he researched Skinwalker Ranch and all that. I believe he even yeah, owned it at one point. Yeah, we've episode. talked about that in recent episodes. But he believes that there's an ET presence already here and that it's not even a question. But, but it's interesting how, how these clips are disappearing off the Internet. It is. And oh, it's for a reason, for sure. Right. It seems why like they'll be taken off YouTube. Yeah. It, why? Yeah, and they won't give a fucking reason. No. Because they won't give me a reason either for no. why my shit gets taken off YouTube. I know. It's crazy, though. It's it seems so like there is this, like, conspiracy to Control. to keep all of this under wraps. Oh, there's and not, definitely censorship. Not mean, let us we know. Are definitely experiencing that. Absolutely. So it's all about finding the truth about what's going on in space yeah. and on the moon. So and that's why it's good to question all this stuff. It may absolutely. seem kind of, it may feel like kind of insane to it, question. It does. Sometimes I'm feeling, sometimes I feel like major, you know, tin hat, whatever yeah, you want to call yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. 
like, come on, it's good to think. It's good to entertain them at least. Mm -hmm. At least entertain it. You don't have to believe it. You can think it's bullshit, but mm -hmm. at least think about it. Get you your know, mind thinking. Could be yourself. a possibility because we don't know for totally. sure totally. either way. So we'd love to know what you guys think about all these theories yes. and the moon. Do you believe it's artificial or not? But hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of the Mile Higher Podcast. We will wrap it up there and see you guys next week. Stay safe. And stay woke. We will see you guys next time.